Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we're doing my European League predictions. And today, we'll be predicting the eight best leagues in Europe that are not in the top five leagues. Okay? So, like I said, guys, I hope you guys do enjoy this. I'm going to be just predicting just a winner uh, for this. You know, I'm not going to be predicting all the champ uh, European spots. Um, I'll just be predicting just a winner. And so, I want to know your guys' predictions in the comments below. There will be times in the description for you guys for each of the leagues. And like I said, guys, it should be fun. It should be fun covering these leagues, you know. Obviously, I'll be more focused on the top five leagues, but I'll occasionally, every now and then, for a monthly recap, we'll also look into these leagues as well. So let's start with the Eredivisie, man. Eredivisie first league. When I look at this league, it's going to be a two-horse race. It's really between PSV and Feyenoord. I don't believe Ajax is good enough. I, I think Ajax for me are still regressing. I think it'll take a couple of seasons for them to challenge for a league title. Um, as far as 20 and AZ Alkmaar are concerned, they're both great teams. I respect both teams. I don't think they have enough quality to contest for a league title. And when I was looking at PSV and uh, Feyenoord, both of the clubs haven't really done a lot of business in terms of transfers. Now, PSV did get um, the player Serginho Des and Malik Tillman both on a permanent deal. So that is massive for them. And I think the big thing that PSV have over Feyenoord is that they've kept their coach, uh, Peter Bosch. Whereas Feyenoord have lost the coach on a slot. And I think that's a huge, a huge, it's going to be, it's gonna be a huge downgrade. And it'll take a lot of time for Feyenoord to settle in with their new coach. And for that reason, I actually have PSV to win the league. Because I just feel like for me, PSV, they kept everything in shape, everything intact. And I feel like Feyenoord for me, I think that losing that coach is such a big, big disappointment. And I think that's what's going to give PSV the edge there. Although, to be fair, Feyenoord did defeat PSV in the Super Cup. So, we'll see if Feyenoord can do it. You know, obviously, look out for Santiago Jimenez, of course. But, yeah, I'm going to go with PSV to defend their league title. Moving on over to Liga Portugal, guys. Liga Portugal, guys. It's really a three-horse race. It's between Sporting, uh, Benfica, and Porto. Dare would I say even a two-horse race. Because Porto have looked, Porto have really regressed this season guys their coach Sergio Council South has left and their top striker Medi Taremi has left as well so on a free so it really is concerning from that point of view from Porto and the sense of what they've been doing as for sporting I look at their business they actually sold their goalkeeper Adan which I thought was very interesting he was actually a great goalkeeper in my opinion which made me very surprised and other than that, Sporting haven't had a lot of major arrivals. You know, it departed. they've had some, you know, players on loan and stuff like that come back. But it's not really been any notable players, you know. I thought Adon, though, was a very notable player. And as for Benfica, um, they've done some good business. Um, and I they, they've done more business than Sporting. So I think Benfica, for me, they, is they're looking good. And I think for this one, guys, it's a very close one to call. It's really between Benfica and Sporting for me. I'm going to go with Benfica just on the sole basis that I feel like Sporting for me, I just don't think they have enough to defend their title. As well as the fact that Sporting solo and their goalkeeper, I just think is a very odd decision, especially when he was one of their best players. And he, I believe they let him go into free as well. So, yeah, I just think Benfica for me, I'm going to go with them to go do, to do it. Um, and, yeah. I think they're going to do it, guys, and we'll see how this ages. Because I'm not confident with this. Am I confident with this one? Not particularly, but I think this one, it's going to be close, but I'm going to get Benfica a slight edge after a disappointing last season. Next up, it is the Jupiter Pro League, guys. So when I look at this league, guys, when I was doing my research for this guy's league, you know what was really funny? The fact that Union SG sold, sold some of their players to Club Bruges. That is just disgraceful. Your your title rivals on a free as well is ridiculous. Ridiculous. I believe the guy is a guy named Nielsen, I believe. And I, I look at the, the business that's been doing, been done, guys. I just feel like for me, Union SG, they're the best hope to stop Club Rouge. They're the best hope because I don't trust any of their Belgium teams. And I look at this league, guys. I think it's Club Rouge just to lose. I, I don't see Union SG doing it. I put so much faith in them in the last few seasons. They they screwed up the last season by finishing one point behind, and then the season before, they you know they lost in the final match day. So I I, I give up with Union SG. I give up with them. And you know you know what would be really funny, guys. 
New SG win the league when I don't expect them to win the league this season. Like that would be such Yuvian and that would be so characteristic. That would be so it would be so much a jinxing characteristic for me that I wouldn't be surprised. But I think Club Rouge, they should have enough to defend their title. And I just think New SG are just not gonna do it. I think Club Rouge have too much quality in their team, and I think they're gonna do it, guys. And yeah, we're gonna move to the next league. Next league we got here is the Turkish Super League, guys. Now this one's interesting, guys. It's between Galatasaray and Fernbahce. And when I was looking at the business being done, guys, Fernbahce got a steal. Two big, two big players came in. Well, two big people came in. One, the coach, Jose Mourinho. Jose Mourinho is a amazing coach. Sure, he's not at his best right now, and like, let's be real, this is probably the worst we have seen him Mourinho in a long time. But I think Mourinho is still a good coach, as we just seen with uh, what he did with Roma, getting to them to the Europa League final and obviously winning the conference league with them. He also, they also got Yusuf Ed Naziri. Now that is a quality signing. That's a quality signing. And I just think that for me, the fact that Fernbahce have just missed out on the league tiles in the last few seasons, the last season in particular, I believe they were literally one, I think they were like three points away from the title. Finish year on 99 points, I believe. And Galatasaray got 102 points. I think the era is going to come to an end, guys. And I actually have Fernbahce to win this league. I think they're going to do it, guys. I just think Jose Mourinho, him arriving, is going to be that X factor for Fernbahce to finally win the league top. I think him alone is going to get Fernbahce to be so resolute defensively. And I think Fernbahce can do this. It's going to be close. It's going to come down to a wire. I wouldn't be surprised if this gets decided by one point or goal difference. I'm just going to go with Fernbahce to do it. And I think Fernbahce will finally win the league title, guys, for quite some time. And in the Galatasaray streak. Moving to the next league we got here, guys. It is the, uh, uh, I believe it's a Czech league. I believe this is a Czech league. And when I look at the Czech league, guys, it's basically a two-horse race. It's basically between Slavia Praha and Sparta Praha. And I just I just look at the business as being done. I think Sparta Praha's got this. I think Sparta Praha's do, do, got this. Um, I haven't really been convinced with Slavia Praha with them. They've been doing the business. And I think Sparta Praha is a really underrated team, guys. I really did. I really do think that uh, Sparta Praha is a strong team. They're both strong teams, to be fair. But I think Sparta Praha is just slightly better. And, you know, I, I think they're going to just do it, guys. They're going to just do it by the... They're going to just do it just about. But it don't, it wouldn't be surprising me if Slavia Praha do it as well. It's a close one. But I'm going to go Sparta Praha just because they have, I believe, more quality. Uh, next up, it is the Greek Super League. Now, this, guys, out of all the leagues I put in this video, this is probably the one that is the most contested. Because there's quite a couple, uh, there's four teams that are competing for this. You have Panathinaikos, you have Ake Athens, then you have Pauk, and then um, you have those three teams for, for uh, competing for this title, guys. And so then also don't forget Olympiakos. Olympiakos is also in this as well. It's a very, very difficult to call for this league, guys. I think this league is the most difficult to win. And it's honestly like a, flip of, uh, a flip of a coin, honestly, at this rate. It was a flip of a coin. Because I really, because I was looking at the business being done by all four of the teams, and what really stood out to me was the fact that I believe Olympiacos, they sold so many players, they sold so many players, so that's the reason why I didn't go for Olympiacos to win this league because I was actually going to pick them to win the league, but because they sold so many players, I was like, bro, that, that you can't, and they didn't really get a lot of in, in, in players in. Like when you sell so many players, you naturally get a lot of players in, right? They, they didn't really do that. So that's why I have to go with AAK Athens. I hope Olympiacos do win it because that's the team I want them to win the most, you know, especially after winning the conference league. But I think AAK Athens is going to do it, guys. I think AAK Athens is going to do it. I think, you know, they're just the, the 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 favorite, you know, of course, the defending champions. So I think they're going to do it, guys. But I would love to see Olympiacos do it. I'd love to see Olympiacos do it. Or Pauk or um, Benetanaikos to do it as well would also be cool. Okay, next up, it is the Danish Super League, guys. The Danish Super League. Now, for this one, guys, it's also very interesting, guys. You have FC Copenhagen. Then you obviously have Michelin and Bronby. And I was looking at the business being done by all three of the teams. I think it's fair to say that Copenhagen's got this. I think Copenhagen's going to win this league, guys. Uh, Bronby, I wasn't too impressed with them, honestly. Uh, they had a lot of departures. Not really a lot of rivals in Michelin. I just don't think they have enough quality to compete, so... I think Copenhagen's got this. They're the best team in Denmark for me. So, you know, I believe they're defending champions as well. So they should be able to win this league. Uh, but 
Hopefully we can get a different winner just for the league's sake. Uh, then we move to Austria Bundesliga, guys. Now, this is going to be interesting, guys. Can Storm guys do back-to-back? -back? They're kind of like the Leverkusen that we see in the German Bundesliga. At Salzburg, or kind of like the Bayern Munich, the, you know, having losing so much dominance. I was looking at the business being done by both of the teams, and I'll be honest with you, Salzburg didn't do much. They A lot of the players they got back, a lot of the players they brought in were players that came back from low. They did sign this one player, though, I believe it's right, for $23 million. But other than that, Storm Gaz have made a lot of good business. So with that reason, I'm going to go Storm Gaz to defend their league title, guys. Storm Gaz to defend their league. So that is it for me, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy this prediction video, guys. I want to know what you guys think in the comments below, guys. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe. And let me know what you guys think, guys. Do you guys like how this kind of concise I did for all these eight leagues? You know, let me know your predictions as well in the comments below. And maybe at the end of the season, guys, I'll look at who won who's got the most league winners correctly in the comments below. And whoever does, maybe I'll give a shout out or something, or maybe I'll give a prize. We'll see. We'll see how many people do this in this video. And of course, guys, I will be doing my top five league predictions video later this week. Hope you guys enjoy and peace out.